good afternoon, everyone. It's now 3.05, so I think we'll get started. want to be respectful of everybody's time this afternoon. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to the third uh, water rate uh, increase or water revenue increase public meeting for the Water Services Department. I'm Interim Water Services Director Eric Froberg. I want to thank you all for taking time uh, to come here about this uh, important initiative for the Water Services Department. Uh, we do have the ability to ask questions uh, in the chat or the Q&A section. Uh, we'll be monitoring those uh, and we'll uh, take care of those at the end. So go ahead, if you have any of questions, uh, please type them in as we're going along. But with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So a real kind of high level overview of what we'll be talking about today. Uh, we'll be doing just an introduction of, of the water rate increase or the water revenue increase itself. We'll talk about all the different public outreach efforts that the Water Services Department is completing. We will talk then about the financial forecast for both the wastewater and the water side of the department. Uh, we'll then talk about specifically the increase that we are uh, seeking and proposing on the water side. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about project assist and then the affordability and some of the community programs that the department is involved with. So specifically, here's the introduction. What the, well, the Water Services Department is proposing is a water rate increase spread out over a two-year period. Uh, that rate increase would provide funding for resources needed to invest in rehabilitation and replacement of water pipes, treatment plants, pumps, reservoirs, and wells that ensure the reliable delivery of the city's drinking water. A little bit about the department uh, itself. Uh, the, there are two main goals of the Water Services Department. Uh, one of them is to provide uh, reliable and high quality wa drinking water uh, to 1.7 million people in and around the city of Phoenix. Uh, and then on the wastewater side uh, to collect and treat for 2.9 million people in the metro Phoenix area. You may wonder why those two numbers are different. Uh, on the wastewater side, our 91st Avenue treatment plant does accept and treat through an agreement with other West Valley cities. Uh, so we do have uh, more, on the way, more users on the wastewater side than on the water side. Uh, specifically on the water side, uh, we do produce uh, around or approximately 108 billion gallons of, of water in a year. And the Water Services Department itself employs over 1,300 staff, uh, and that's on both the water and the wastewater side. So here we have a, a graphic that shows a little bit on how the, the water system works here uh, in the city of Phoenix. Uh, water approaches are, is delivered to us, and there are two main sources. There's Colorado River water, so that, that comes to us in the CAP canal. Uh, and then there's the Salt and Verde River, uh, which uh, provide us through SRP, they provide us water uh, for, through their canals. Uh, but regardless of the source, the water comes to us through the canals, uh, goes into our water treatment plants. That's where the water is then treated uh, to drinking water standards. It is stored in reservoirs. Uh, and booster pump stations that are spread out all throughout the city help to push the water uh, where we need it and deliver it to either your homes or your businesses uh, through the pipelines that are under uh, most of most or almost all of the roadways within the city of Phoenix. Uh, again, and we also are showing here the fire hydrants. Uh, it may not, you know, if you aren't looking for them, they, they tend to blend in because you don't look for them all the time. Uh, but there are 54,000 fire hydrants uh, sprinkled throughout the city uh, to help with, uh, in the case that, you know, fire, uh, firefighters need to fight fires either, again, at businesses or residents. So it's just a real kind of high-level overview. Most of the things that we'll talk about today are the aging infrastructure. A lot of it is folks, uh, focused on these things, the pipes, the fire hydrants, and the, the treatment plants. So, uh, What's really the, the, the crux of this rate increase is the aging infrastructure. Uh, the graph here is to show, and it, it's to show how the city of Phoenix really grew up in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And I know that the numbers are, are small at the bottom and, and on the side, but the graph here kind of shows here in the, in the decade of the 1950s, uh, there were nearly 600 miles of pipeline installed. Then in the 1960s, another 800 miles 
And then in the, in the 1970s and, and then founding, nearly 1,600 miles of pipeline were installed. So just in those three decades, you had over 3,000 miles of pipeline that were installed. Uh, it's, it's important to note that when engineers design pipelines and water and wastewater infrastructure, uh, the life expectancy of, of a pipeline is around 75 years. So if we go to the next slide here and we fast forward uh, those 75 years, and again, the, the numbers are small, and, uh, but we have a lot of data here to show that when you fast forward 70 years from 1950, that puts us in the 2020 range. That puts us where we are today. Uh, and the other thing to note is the numbers on the left-hand side, those are in billions of dollars. So as you can see, the pipelines that were installed in the 1950s that are now coming due and ready to be replaced based on life expectancy uh, is approaching a billion dollars in replacement costs. But as you can see uh, in the, in this, of course, this graph closely mirrors the shape of the graph before it. Uh, as, as we get into the pipes that were installed in the 50s or the 60s, 70s, Right, you can see that the cost to replace them, uh, you know, it's anticipated in the decade of the 2060s that uh, nearly $4 billion would be required to replace those pipelines. So um, a lot of work to be done, but uh, the Water Services Department is, is ready to do it. So on the public outreach side, the, the city or the Water Services Department is very serious and interested in public comment. Uh, and, and we've set up a lot of meetings uh, meeting similar to this, uh, but we, we also have the Rate Advisory Committee. We met with them, so this is the Water and Wastewater Rate Advisory Committee, and I'll talk a little bit more about them later, uh, but we had a presentation to them, uh, and they provided a recommendation in uh, the end of January uh, about which of the three options that we'll talk about here in a minute, which one that they felt was most prudent to move forward with. Uh, we've also been to, or we will be, we're in the middle of it now, the 15 different village planning meetings. So we're going out and, and giving a similar presentation to this, not quite as long, um, but it provides the same information at those village meetings to try to get out and reach more people. As I mentioned, uh, there are four of these virtual public meetings, these workshops that we're doing, we're in the third one. Uh, there will be one next week, uh, that'll be a Spanish, an all Spanish version. Uh, that will be next week at 6 p.m. Uh, on our website, there are videos uh, that have been posted that you could go check out, get a little bit more information about the water rate increase. Uh, there's also a survey posted on our website uh, for all this month. It's active now. Uh, we would encourage you to go and fill out that survey. It's a very short survey, nine questions, but it gives us an idea of what the public feeling is about this water rate increase. And we give a little bit more information about the needs that the Water Services Department has. We presented at TII, the Transportation Innovation and Infrastructure uh, Subcommittee. That's a subcommittee, a smaller group of the city council members. We went on February 3rd and presented a very similar presentation to this. Uh, and then the, the last one is there will be a public hearing and a meeting at the formal council meeting on March 17th. So as you can see, uh, we're trying to get the word out there. Uh, we've done lots with social media and we're, we're trying to get the word out there. We have grocery TV uh, in some of the local uh, grocery stores. So we're, we're trying to get the information out just as best we can. So now we'll talk a little bit about the financials. Uh, for the wastewater and the water side. So it, it's important to note that, you know, the, the overall mission of the Water Services Department is to provide high quality, reliable, and cost-effective water services that meet the needs of the public. And the four main areas that the Water Services Department focuses on are quality of life, uh, and that's, you know, making sure that uh, everyone, whether it's schools uh, or homes, residences, are able to do the things that they want to do as yeah with drinking water and swimming pools and you know all of those types of things uh, so that's an important one uh, economic development of course uh, being able to attract business and to have uh, the again kind of ties to the quality of life here uh, having water in the desert southwest is important and the water services department has done a good job planning for the future of course, public health and safety, all the water that we deliver to our customers has to meet 
very strict guidelines and we spend a lot of time and effort uh, making sure that we're meeting all of that criteria. And then sustainability. We do, again, understand that we do live in the desert southwest and we are very cognizant of that and we try to do many sustainable type things and we'll talk, there's a little bit of information about that here at the end. Uh, with our, uh, on the wastewater side, you know, there's the whole Trace Rios thing, which is, it's a fantastic place. It's, it's a whole presentation on its own, so we won't talk too much about that today, but, you know, using groundwater, recharging our groundwater with CAP water and those types of things. Again, the water, the water services department has done a great job of planning for the future. So very briefly, we, we aren't at, uh, right now, there won't, we aren't asking for any increase on the wastewater side, but we thought it was important to talk about both sides of the department. Uh, on the wastewater side, uh, just for context of how big the system is, uh, they, the wastewater, the, or the water service, the sewer department, you know, they do treat 62 billion gallons of wastewater a year. They have over 5,000 miles of piping infrastructure. Uh, there's over 100,000 manholes and cleanouts and, and 29 lift stations. So a very big system. Every year, uh, the Water Services Department, they get together and they plan their five-year CIP. Currently, based on the information that we have, uh, we do not foresee a rate increase, uh, particularly in the next two years. As with every financial plan, as you get into the later years, it gets a little less certain, uh, but we do we do feel very confident that in the next two years for uh, 20, 2021 and 2022 that uh, there would not be a need to uh, increase uh, any revenues or have a rate increase on the wastewater side. On the water side, again, here's a, a few kind of fun facts. For, to give you the kind of the scope of this side. So there are 7,000 miles of, of water mains, uh, 4,560 water service connections. So nearly half a million water service connections, 163,000 valves. And again, as we talked about, 55,000 fire hydrants. So again, a very large system that the water services department is responsible for. So here we'll talk, uh, this is kind of the, the main point that we'll be talking about here. So I'll be on this slide here for a little while. So what this shows is uh, the three options that we are currently looking at and uh, import more and also important is the previous plan. So back in 2018, uh, to the Water Services Department went to council and proposed the, the plan that you see here on the left a 6% rate increase in 2029, a 6% rate increase in 2020, followed by three, uh, three and a half percent rate increases. Uh, the, the top two numbers, the 2029, 2020, those are all been greened out. They show in green because those have already been implemented. So uh, we're really talking about the highlighted versions here. And I, I uh, just bring the point up about what the previous plan was uh, so I can reference it later. So. One option that we went to, the option one that we went to uh, TII with in December actually, uh, showed a 0% rate increase for 2021 and a 6.5% rate increase in 2022. Uh, and for a variety of reasons, uh, TII asked us to go back and look uh, at a few different options. Uh, while the zero uh, may be attractive now, and we understand that with COVID that 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 has some benefit. There was some concern that a six and a half percent rate increase next year uh, was problem, may be problematic. So they asked us to look at a few different options. So they asked us to look at options two and three. Option two uh, would be a three percent rate increase uh, this calendar year and a three and a half percent rate increase next calendar year. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is very similar to what had been previously proposed to the council district or to the council, mayor and council. Uh, we were able to, through some efficiencies that the water services department were able to identify, and being that we are able to refinance now some of the debt that we currently have at a lower rate, uh, this, this is actually lower than what had been previously proposed. It's now a 3% in, in 2021 and a 3.5% in 2022. Uh, and then the TNI asked us to look at one additional option, which would be a 0% in 2021 and a 3.5% in 2022. 
I will talk a little bit more in depth about each of these options on the next slide. Something else to point out is, uh, as you can see there, the current five-year plans uh, are projecting out uh, an additional two years that these were not forecasted in the original plan two years ago, hadn't forecasted beyond the five-year plan. So that's why the previous plan didn't show information for 2024 and 2025. So as time has gone on, we're able to project further out into the future. So with option one, which is again, a 0% rate increase for 2021 and a 6.5% rate increase in 2022, this does fully fund the capital improvement program uh, but because of the, the, the time delay in the first in revenue increase reaching us, it would delay $100 million, approximately $100 million of projects, approximately 18 months. Uh, so the CIP is still there. It would just be slowed a little until we actually started to see the revenue. Uh, and then some of the equity initiatives would be slowed similarly to the CIP. Option two. Uh, which again was a three and a half percent this year and a three and a three percent this year and a three and a half percent next year. Uh, this does again also fully fund the capital improvement program. Uh, all capital improvement program, all projects would move forward just as they had normally been scheduled. Again, this is the one that was very similar to the proposed plan uh, from two years ago. Uh, and similarly, the uh, equity issues. Uh, equity initiatives would continue as proposed. Uh, this is the option that the Water and Wastewater Rate Advisory Committee, the RAC, this is the option that they approved. Uh, and just a little bit of background on RAC, uh, those, those are professionals from this community uh, that have uh, volunteered their time to help the department and they are appointed by their mayor and council. So uh, very dedicated people who are work very closely with the department to make sure that uh, we are spending the taxpayers' money uh, as efficiently and wisely as we can. Option three, the third option, uh, uh, that is the 0% rate increase in uh, this year and a 3.5% rate increase next year. Uh, this one uh, does not fund the five-year CIP. It does, not have, it does not generate enough revenue to cover the debt service that would be required on uh, the amount of projects that we have in the CIP. Uh, under this scenario, the Water Services Department would be a very reactive type of department instead of proactive. Uh, we would only be able to work on the emergency type projects, water main breaks, water leaks, those types of things, but we wouldn't be out there proactively. We wouldn't have the funding to proactively replace the aging infrastructure. One question that we do get, and we wanted to make sure that we were clear on, is that this, this option would not have an impact. Really, none of the options presented would have an impact on the uh, drought pipeline infrastructure that uh, went to mayor and council a few years ago. That, those were, that project or that program was funded under some sustainability bonds that are separate from the rate increase. So they are separate programs. So some of the programs that would not be funded under this option uh, include the water, water main replacement projects. There's 18 of those currently in the CIP. There are 18 of those totaling a little more than $175 million. Or no, those are the, sorry, excuse me, those are the water treatment plant rehabilitations, 18 of those for $175 million. There are 66 water main replacement programs that would not be funding uh, that's over $300 million that would not be able to move forward. Uh, there are 12 projects uh, associated with booster pump stations and water storage. Uh, those would not be able to move forward. Uh, there's also some process control and technology efficiency upgrades that could not move forward, 13 of those for nearly $55 million. And one of the more important ones here, and this goes to some of the sustainability, is the Colorado uh, River Resiliency Fund uh, would not be able to move forward. That's around $77 million. Uh, that's the program where we purchase water uh, in excess of what we need in a given year, but we store it uh, underground, and then it becomes available to us in the future. So uh, that's another project that would uh, not be able to move forward. So as far as the timeline, uh, Many of the uh, 
like I talked about, the village planning meetings are going on now. Really the next uh, major item is uh, the council hearing or the, the public hearing on March 17th and then the council adoption again at that same meeting of whatever option they, they choose to move forward with. Uh, depending on the option, the, the earliest that rates would be impacted uh, would be in October of this year and that was under option two when we had the option, the 3%. Uh, if either of the other two options are impacted in 2020 it, for the second year, it wouldn't be until March of 2022. We added this slide in here to kind of just give everyone an idea of what revenue increases on the water side had looked like in the past. So we went back uh, basically the last uh, 20 years uh, and you can see that, you know, since 2021, uh, there were increases between three and 12% between 2021 and 2012. Uh, during the recession, there were a few years where there were zero rate increase uh, just based on uh, those times, uh, they did get back to some rate increases, some minor rate increases in 2016 and 2017. And then here you can see in 2019 and 2020, uh, these were the two 6% rate increases that we talked about as part of the previous plan. So before I talk about this slide, one thing that I, I didn't talk about and I, and I wanted to kind of relate it to, because, you know, I'm, I'm at home and I'm talking with my kids about, you know, the, the, what I do at work. And they said, well, so what do you really need this, the rate increase for? And I explained to them about the pipes and that we need to replace them. And that it didn't really seem to make sense, too much sense to them because they don't see the water pipes. You know, they're, they aren't something that's visible. And I said, okay, well, let me relate it to my car. You know, we went out and we bought my car uh, and they were really happy when, you know, we bought my car and we were driving the car and then, you know, I drove it for three or four years and then it was time to get new tires. And they, that kind of clicked to them. They're like, oh, so you've been using the car, yes, and you've been using the tires, yes, but the tires wear out. It's the same thing with the water infrastructure on both the water pipes and the sewer pipes. Eventually, they just wear out and it, it was time to replace them. So I said, so now, we put in pipes 70 years ago, and some of the pipes that are still in existence are over 100 years old, um, but some, the pipes are old and it's time to replace them. Similar to the tires on your car, it's time to replace the, time to replace the pipes in the ground. So, so what would this 6.5% rate increase mean to the average customer? It would, it would after the total 6.5, now whether it's option one, it would be in the second year, option two, it would be after the second year, uh, but that would equate to the average customer of about $2.40 per month uh, after the full rate increase is implemented, or the equivalent of about $0.06 cents a day. Or, sorry, excuse me, $0.08 cents a day. So that $0.08 cents a day, what, it, what does that mean as far as affordability and the, the extra $2.40 a month? So here we have a chart that shows how water charges compared to other, other Valley cities. So as you can see, City of Phoenix uh, shows very favorably here. We are one of the more affordable uh, on the water side when you look at just the water rates. Uh, when you compare us water rates to other Southwestern cities, larger Southwestern cities, you can see that we are very affordable uh, in comparison to the San Jose's and Tucson's and Albuquerque's uh, we're very much on the on the lower side. So we, we do our best uh, and the rate advisory committee helps us to make sure that we keeping our rates as low as we can, but at a level that is sustainable and allows us to make the uh, improvements that we need. Uh, here's another chart that shows when you add water and wastewater together. Again, comparing just uh, here cities here in the valley, you can see we're right in the middle as far as affordability goes with the water and wastewater combined. Uh, when you look again at the southwestern, large southwestern cities, again, very affordable, very much on the, uh, the right-hand side of the graph there, which is, which is where we want to be. So a little bit here about Project Assist, uh, and this is a, a program that the Water Services Department is, is very excited about, very um, encouraged with. Uh, this is a project, this is a program that is there to help uh, those of us in the community that are having troubles uh, meeting the needs of uh, their 
water services bill or their, their Phoenix bill. Uh, in, re in recent years, because of a variety of factors, the, city's the city has basically doubled their project assist, their contribution to the project assist program from $350,000 to $700,000 every year. Uh, as some of you may know, uh, in, I believe it's January, the council reallocated $2 million of general fund money uh, to help with any delinquencies associated with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, as of today, uh, that $2 million, we've allocated about 1.4 million of that $2 million out into the public. We've been able to assist uh, over 2,200 uh, customers. So we're really excited about that and we continue to make sure that we are helping uh, the most needy in our community. Uh, and as far as project assist going forward, you know, as part of this, uh, in conjunction with this rate increase, you know, water services exploring other creative ways to increase that annual contribution to project assist to be able to reach more people. So a little more about the affordability in the community programs, and this is in addition to project assist, which would fit on this, but it was worth having uh, project assist being highlighted. Uh, in 2017, the Water Services Department did a pretty extensive affordability assessment. That's where some of that data uh, came from about how we compared with other cities. Uh, and then in 2020, uh, based on some work that the Water and Wastewater Rate Advisory Committee, the Water Services Department and Council, we approved a few changes to the code uh, that allows uh, for low flow devices to be installed. That's the flow restriction pilot. Uh, it allows us to, instead of just turning water off uh, to delinquent accounts, we were able to uh, still allow a, some amount of water to be delivered and not purely cut someone off. Uh, and we've also looked at uh, an, uh, halting late fees uh, after the service is turned off. But I will state right now, uh, be, with the COVID pandemic, we are not shutting anyone's water off. We understand the importance that water plays uh, in being able with sanitation and washing hands and all of those types of things. So uh, you know, right now, uh, during the emergency declaration, we are not looking to uh, shut anyone off. So with that, uh, I will open up uh, the questions side here. Um, I will, we have the email address here. If you wanna, ha if you do have any questions or comments that we don't get to today, uh, if you could email them to watersmart at phoenix.gov, that would be fantastic. We'll be sure to, uh, we are sharing those with the mayor and council so they understand what the public has told us. Uh, we also have, I will uh, ask you too, to go to the water services webpage so you can uh, go ahead and get the survey filled out for us. That would be great. They've challenged us to get a thousand responses. We're doing, we're on our way, uh, but we could definitely use some more. So if you could help us out with that, that would be great. So let me open the chat window here. All right. So, uh, so we did have one question in the Q&A section about posting of the uh, pre presentation. We will, we will definitely get that posted on our website. So the, the presentation and the survey will be on, you can go to phoenix.gov slash water rates. Uh, let's see. So there's a question here that it appears that water rates have already increased approximately 25% in the last month. Uh, this is without any additional water usage. So I think there may, um, there may be some confusion on, there was a public works, the solid waste group did have a, a rate increase uh, very recently. That may be the increase that this customer is seeing uh, when you get your uh, Phoenix services bill, most I even call it the water bill at home. But when you get that, when you get that bill, uh, that that includes your water, your wastewater, and your solid waste, your trash collection. So uh, that increase uh, may be on the tr on the uh, solid waste, the trash collection side. But water rates have not changed. 
uh, since uh, last March. So there's a question here uh, about uh, several times in 2020, uh, this user has called in that there's been water running uh, past their house. So this is in regards to water main breaks. Uh, we understand that this is definitely important. It's important to us and we understand that, you know, when there are water breaks that you know, lots of water is lost uh, during those. Um, the, we at the Water Services Department, uh, through an, a pretty sophisticated asset management program, we, are, we, are, we track a lot of information about the pipes, the age of the pipes, the condition, the size, all of those things. Uh, and based on a risk assessment model, we do our best to prioritize where we feel uh, the next leak and break may happen. Of course, uh, when you have leaks and breaks in neighborhoods, right, that helps provide additional data to the condition of the pipe. Uh, based on that priority is how we prioritize the CIP and we do uh, the water main replacement projects. And that's what, you know, at the end of the day, that's really what this rate increase is in regards to, is in regards to uh, the, in, the aging infrastructure. Uh, and then there was a question again about the uh, survey. Again, that's at phoenix.gov slash water rate. Uh, do, let me put you guys here on Hold here a minute, I'll check the Q&A. So we had a question about a map and how that relates to the CIP program. There is a, uh, on the city's website, and I believe it's at the, in the Water Services Department specifically, there is a link to the water CIP, the water and the wastewater CIP, uh, where you can find lots of information about upcoming projects and where some, you can figure out in, you know, specific to your neighborhood, what projects may be coming up. We also had a question about the 6% rate increase or that there was a 6% rate increase last year and you know why we're coming again this year. Um, I would go back to uh, the slide where we had talked about, you know, as we project in, you know, two years ago uh, when they went to council last time, the five-year plan did show two 6% rate increases followed by three, three and a half percent rate increases. Um, the Water Services Department, as you could, uh, if you recall from the, the graph that shows the cost to replace the aging infrastructure, uh, there's, there's a significant amount of infrastructure that is coming due and coming. It, it's time to replace those. Again, it's time to replace those tires on the car. So um, two years ago when they went to council, there, this, the three, there was a 3.5% plan for this year and a 3.5% for next year. So. If option two is the one that moves forward, that's generally following along with the previous plan. Again, two years ago, they we only project out a five-year CIP, so the rate projections are, again, based on that five-year time period because it relates back to the capital improvement project. So now, fast forward two years from that point, now we're looking five more years into the future. So. On that one on that one chart, it shows you know additional three and a half percent rate increases in the in years four and five. So this is a um, continual uh, looking to uh, maintain the current system that uh, people before us have uh, invested in for us. So time for us to replace some of these pipes. So we had a question here about uh, has the water just has the water services department uh, applied for? Do we receive any money from grants? Uh, 
generally the answer is no. Uh, we are an enterprise fund, uh, so we own, we, the city of Phoenix and the residents of Phoenix own this infrastructure, so it is generally our responsibility to maintain and replace that infrastructure. Uh, we do receive some, inf uh, some funding through grants for water conservation efforts and some of the some of those things to help us uh, with those types of initiatives. But largely the program uh, is funded by the users and it's funded by as you turn on the tap and you use uh, your water to do whatever you're doing with it, you know, taking a bath or washing your car, drinking it. Um, that's how we uh, earn revenue to be able to fund the project uh, to replace water lines, update treatment plants, and those types of things. So, So we had a question about the, I think it was a follow up to the 6% rate increase last year and then coming into this year that there was a question about what projects specifically uh, were funded with that 6% rate increase uh, and then to follow up what projects would then be uh, implemented with this rate increase, whichever option it goes. I think the easiest way to explain how that works is, is that the CIP is much larger than the revenue that we actually receive from the users. So uh, again, trying to explain this uh, to my young kids at home, uh, kind of relate this to a mortgage, a home mortgage. So what, what really we're asking for here, uh, as far as uh, the revenues and the rates, it's really the W-2s, right? It's how much money are we, the water services, earning, or how much do I individually earn on my W-2s, and I provide that to the bank and the bank looks at my W-2s or the banks look at our revenue and go, okay, with that amount of revenue, you can over time earn this, you know, earn, you can have this size house or you can have this amount of money to do your infrastructure. So really the re this revenue that we're getting is really to help us cover the debt service um, on money that we borrow to do these projects. So the revenue, there isn't a, specific project where we can say, okay, this three and a half percent or this six and a half percent rate increase or the six percent last time goes to this specific project. What it goes to is showing the financial institutions that we borrow money for that we have money coming in the door, that we have money to be able to cover the interest and the types of fees and those types of things that come with borrowing that money. So it isn't specific to a particular project. But again, I'll direct you to the CIP. The CIP uh, lists out all the projects that we plan to do as a department on the water and the wastewater side over the next five years. So uh, as of today, you know, the proposed rate increase and the pr proposed financial plan that we have for the next five years would cover that five-year CIP. Now, if we were a year from now, it would cover the next five years. So it would cover years two through six really of this year, right? If that makes sense, it pushes it out one year. So we're always moving with it. The financial plan and the CIP always move together. But the CIP, you can go in there now and see which projects are uh, available or are planned to happen in the next five years. So let me check the list again, one moment. All right, so I got a correction here on the, so it's, the, oh, the CIP, sorry. The CIP more specifically is, tell me again. It's waterworks.phoenix.gov is where you can go check out the uh, CIP. So with that, I don't see any other questions. We'll hang around for a couple minutes here uh, to see if uh, people have any additional comments, but it, you know, we're, we're Want to make sure that we are respectful of everyone's time. So I'll put you on hold and uh, we'll see here if we get any more comments here.
So, uh, so I don't see any more questions coming in. Again, want to uh, be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, I would, uh, if you do have any questions or comments that come up after, uh, after we hang up here, and you're like, "Wow, I really wish I would have asked that that question or made that comment," you know, please send it to us at watersmart@phoenix.gov. Uh, I also put out another plug. Uh, hope that you would go and uh, please fill out the survey for us. Again, we're trying to get to a thousand. Uh, want to make sure that mayor and council have all the information that they can and they've heard from as many residents as they can. Uh, let me get the website so I don't get that one wrong. Hold on. All right, it is at phoenix.gov slash water rates. So please go fill that out for us. I want to thank everyone for coming today and for listening. Thank you for all the great questions uh, and we will uh, be seeing you again soon. Thank you.